Hello there and welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. At the moment we do predominantly focus on A-level chemistry lessons and they are full, designed to be full lesson videos. So please make sure you subscribe and you like to make sure you don't miss out on future videos. I do aim eventually to cover the full A-level specification. If you think there are any, any gaps, please let me know and I'll ensure that I fill them for you. So hopefully you find it useful and good luck. So this video is video three in a series of four, and it's bridging the gap between GCSE and A-level to make that transition to A-level chemistry a little bit more straightforward. And this lesson focuses on atomic structure. So we're gonna remind and, and review the information from GCSE, atomic structure, and we're gonna look at the atomic structure of atoms and ions in terms of subatomic particles. So first, a little bit of history then. Now, this is knowledge that you will have gained from GCSE chemistry and also GCSE physics. So let's look through the, the dates aren't important, okay? And it's the kind of the, an appreciation of how views have changed and theories have changed over the years. So the, the dates aren't important. So going back to very early or ancient Greek time, and um, that's where the term atoms comes from. Um, in terms of atomos, which means Greek for indivisible. And that's the, the theory that if you were to con continue kind of cutting a piece of gold in half, for example, eventually you couldn't cut it in half anymore and you would have an atom of gold. So kind of very basic knowledge, but it kind of makes sense, I suppose. And then at GCSC, you'll have talked about Thomson's plum pudding model, which is the discovery of subatomic particles, the idea that negative charge was um, found and that therefore the rest of it so this was the discovery of electrons so electrons had a negative charge and atoms were neutral overall so the rest of the atom was just made up of a positive cloud if you like we didn't really know what that positive was but it was the discovery of electrons and then probably the biggest breakthrough and you'll have done this um, Rutherford scattering experiment in a bit of detail particularly in physics and probably chemistry the idea that they fired these charged particles through gold foil. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on that experiment, but this was the discovery of the nucleus. So at this point in time, the nucleus being a very densely positive charge at the very center. And actually, atoms were mostly empty space. So this was the idea now that there's a nucleus in the center that's positive, and the electrons kind of orbit this nucleus around the outside, and the electrons are negative, and the charge of the electrons um, is cancelled out by the charge of that nucleus. And the, actually atoms were mostly empty space. And that was as a direct conclusion of the Rutherford scattering experiment with gold foil. And then shortly after, the idea that the electrons weren't just randomly moving around, that they were actually in fixed orbitals known as energy shells. And the present day um, model is a little bit more detailed now because we have kind of these electron clouds a little bit more specific in terms of different orbitals and we'll learn about those um, at a level chemistry so we will move into this orbital method of electronic structure not today's video but that'll be topic one in a level chemistry okay so let's start with these subatomic particles now you'll have all heard of protons neutrons and electrons from gcse and you're probably very happy looking at the relative charges there i think pretty much everyone comes with that sound knowledge that protons have a relative charge of plus one electrons have a relative charge of minus one and neutrons have no charge the only thing that sometimes from my experience that people aren't so kind of clued up on up to speed is the mass of an electron because it's actually accepted at GCSE to call the mass of an electron as zero that's a correct answer in a GCSE exam and therefore many teachers at GCSE will teach you that electrons have no mass that's not strictly true they do have a mass they're just very very small so we've got one over 2000 that basically means that you would need 2000 electrons to have the same mass as one proton so at GCSE, they allow you to say the mass is negligible or zero, but we can't now. So the mass of an electron is one over 2000. And protons and neutrons have the relative mass of one. So they have equal mass. 
OK, so let's look at how we can use the periodic table to deduce or determine the atomic structure of atoms and ions. So here we have lithium from the periodic table. We have two numbers here. The number um, up the top or the bigger of the two numbers is the mass number. Depending on which periodic table you're looking at, you can often see the mass number on the bottom or the top. It varies. Now, on most A-level specs, you're going to see the mass number at the top. But you don't need to panic about that because you'll be given a key, you'll be given a periodic table, and the mass number is always the bigger of the two numbers. So here the mass number is 7, the atomic number is 3. And what does that mean? Well, the atomic number, sometimes it's called the proton number because it is the number of protons. So this is lithium with three protons. Now, lithium will always have three protons. The proton number won't vary. The mass number can vary, and that's down to isotopes. We'll cover isotopes in topic one, but you are probably familiar with isotopes as well from GCSE. So the, the mass number is the number of protons and the number of neutrons. Now, because this is neutral, it doesn't have a charge. It's an atom. It's an uncharged atom. That means that the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Now, going back to the previous slide or the previous page, the protons have a charge of plus one. Electrons have a charge of minus one. Neutrons don't have charge. So to be neutral, your protons and neutrons must be the same. So in this question here, there are three protons because of the proton number. There are three electrons because it doesn't have a charge. And the neutrons are four because the mass is seven, three of which is made up of the protons. So seven minus three is four, four neutrons. Let's look at a slightly more difficult example then. So again, we still have the atomic number and the mass number. And again, the number of protons is the atomic number. The mass number is protons and neutrons. If it's neutral though, this is not neutral because I've given you an aluminium ion. So protons will still be 13. The electrons, however, they are no longer cancelling out. If there was zero charge, then yes, there will be 13 electrons. But this is a plus three charge. That means that the protons are going to outnumber the electrons. Because the electrons are negative, the protons are positive. So this aluminium has three more protons than it has electrons. So it must have 10 electrons. Now, in terms of neutrons, the mass is 27, 13 of which is made up of the protons. So this has 14 neutrons. OK, I'm going to suggest you pause the video now and you work your way through this table in terms of identifying the species or naming the species, identifying the number of protons, neutrons, electrons and as kind of an extra bonus, I've got GCSE electron configuration. And I'm calling that GCSE because actually, once we get to A level, we are going to upgrade that a little bit. But just to kind of practice this. So pause the video, complete this table, and when you're ready, unpause the video and you'll see the answers. And there's your answers here. I just want to point out something that I want you to be careful with. You'll see the name. You'll notice if it's charged, we've called it an ion. Now, with the positive ions, we, we do need to call it a sodium ion. You'll notice with oxygen, the, the fluorine and the chlorine, they've become ides, oxide ion, fluoride ion, chloride ion. That is important. OK, that is important. Thank you very much for watching that. Please. Uh, remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. I do plan on covering all of A-level, AS and A2-level chemistry on here. So look out for future videos. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks now.